I've seen that you are very much invested in the self-defense aspect. I've seen your uh, tutorials on fanatics. You have uh, quite a few. Uh, I've seen uh, recently you've been working with, uh, I forgot their names, Knife Concepts. I, I knife forgot. Control Concepts. Mm -hmm. Knife Control Concepts. <laughs> and you had that clip where you were a bit facetious, so to speak. You were doing uh, a Manari role and then you you you, <laughs> you stabbed the femoral uh, yes. artery. And yeah. obviously it's, it's all a joke, but... It, it, well, but it, it, I'd it hope does. it was obvious, but yeah, I mean, the based on at a, the end was the, definitely obvious. It, it, it good because uh, <laughs> there's there were you can get three different reactions from a video like that, and I've done two videos like that. Uh, I've done one uh, years ago that was a beer and bolo gun disarm. So I figured I had to, <laughs> the only thing I could do to up that is an Imanari <laughs> roll knife disarm. <laughs> so those two videos now so there's now i know that if you do a video like that there's three potential reactions one haha that's a good one you know funny funny you know i get the yeah. joke two um you're going to get yourself killed trying that in a real life situation you shouldn't be telling people to do this because that's you know you're going to get people hurt or killed and yada yada and it's like that's it, i i thought it was blatant enough obvious that it's a joke but okay the third though is maybe the most concerning it's the people who are like you know I, maybe I, I can make it work yeah i could i could see that maybe working you know i've got a couple <laughs> questions but i i could i think that's a pretty good move that's the yeah. scariest one yeah. <laughs> so yeah i i i, mean, I see so I, like i said i've seen you in being invested in in those aspects of the art how you can strangle with the t-shirt, with the jacket, uh, you know, knife control and uh, the other, et cetera. My question is, do you think in some capacity or in some, uh, to some extent, uh, modern, modern jujitsu, no gi, just sit down if the guy is somewhat vicious standing up. Uh, as John Danaher said, you can be a, uh, a jiu-jitsu world champion without a single takedown but in self-defense it's uh it's indispensable I, i'm paraphrasing but so do you think modern jiu-jitsu is so, uh, useless in self-defense or does it still have it obviously you have a big toolbox of techniques right. but in terms of how to handle an actual situation uh modern jiu-jitsu do you think it still has its capacity because i you have arguments for and against, and there are plenty on both sides. Yeah, and I, I feel like I've heard, I, I'm not going to say I've heard all the arguments, but I feel like I've, I've heard the vast majority of the arguments, and some are more fallacious than others. Um, uh, it, and it, my, I think that at this point saying modern jiu-jitsu is, is becoming more and more complicated. Because when you say modern jujitsu to certain people, they picture, okay, well, I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna chase a heel hook, right? I'm gonna chase the leg entanglement and I'm gonna get the heel hook and I'm gonna win. And you can become a world champion like that, absolutely. And and all that people need to see is I'm a world jujitsu champion, right? They don't need to know how you won. You could have won by an advantage in double overtime because you tried a heel hook five times and didn't get it. You know, they, they, it doesn't matter. So there is that aspect of it. And I think that that's where the people, so you have a spectrum and on one side of the spectrum, you have the hardcore purist self-defense only. That's the only thing that matters. Maybe I'll entertain some MMA, but you know, this whole, you know, uh, beer and bolo game, this whole sitting to guard, this whole, you know, double guard pull, whatever that's, that's just trash, you know, on the flips, on the other side of it, I, you also have fallacious arguments. You, you have the people who are on the extreme sport side of it. It's like, I'm just playing a game. I'm just playing a sport. I mean, the, the you know, now granted on my, in my sport, I'm trying to break someone's limbs or I'm trying to choke somebody unconscious, but it's still just a sport. Um, I'm not worried about self-defense because I don't go places where I'm going to get into fights. I've never been in a fight. I'm never going to need to get into a fight. I'm going to avoid those situations. I live, you know, a safe lifestyle. Um, or, you know, if, if, 
uh, I do get into a dangerous situation, then, you know, I've, I, I carry a gun, you know, so it's, I don't, I don't need my jujitsu for that. So those, that's the, the two extremes of the spectrum. Um, I'm, I'm not an optimist in many parts of my life, but I am an optimist when it comes to modern jujitsu, because what I see is I see a lot of open-mindedness these days. And I see something that it, maybe even eight years ago wasn't as present was, I, I think that that was probably maybe, and I might, my timeline might be off, but I think that that was probably the height of seeing people, you know, go out and just, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to look for my leg entanglement. And I'm going to get the heel hook. And so is the other guy, but my defense has to be better than his. And we're going to double guard pull and we're going to play footsie for the entire round. And, you know, hopefully if I don't get the, the, the submission, I'm going to win by advantage. I don't know. Um, now I think you're starting to see a lot more that, okay, we've exhausted the leg lock game. Now that that's a, doesn't mean it's still not effective because it's absolutely extremely effective. It's just harder to get to. People know better defenses now. People understand that they need to watch out for the leg entanglements. People know how to defend it. So now what? What do we do now? Um, we went through the whole fuck it, try a leg lock phase. Um, and that led us to what? Well, now we have to wrestle. <laughs> now we actually have to look for superior positions. Now we have to incorporate more wrestling into our game. Um, I still think that there's certain conventions that are um, being incorporated that haven't even seen their heyday yet. I think that that cradles um, have yet to really reach full fruition uh, to to their best height. I think that seeing the a lot of the um, the adaptations of wrestling for jujitsu, it's it that's such it's it's been there and it's it's gaining momentum. But you watch, you know, the highest level guys are not guys that just sit down and chase legs now. You know, there's like the, if you think about the the top guys, they are all spending time on their wrestling now. They're spending time on their takedowns. They're spending time on their modified judo for uh, submission grappling. And to me, that's a positive thing because that shows kind of a full swing of the pendulum back to a more holistic approach to to grappling. You know, so that's that's how I feel about it. I don't I don't I'm not. I'm not as as big of a I'm not as negative as a lot of people are on the modern jiu jitsu game because I think that it's it's like anything else it's going to come back around that's how revolutions work. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen this uh I have two things to 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 talk. The first one is like the the evolution it's great like I said it's a huge toolbox that you have you just have to know how to use it or you just have to have access to it. Because if, if you're stressed, if you're scared, if you're in whatever situation you are in where you, you, you cannot get to point A to point B, which is your jujitsu, even if you know 100 techniques, it's not going to matter. So that's why, you know, lack of sparring in Aikido or whatever, you know, Koryu jujitsu, that's the problem. You, you don't know how to get to A to B. Right. So, but the, the, for example, the, the evolution is obviously there. There is a, the 80s fight between, I believe, De La Hiva and uh, Hoyler. Hoyler, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Hoyler wasn't passing De La Hiva. So now if you look at the like, yeah. so you see, um, there is obvious evolution, but at the same time, there is just minding basic things. Uh, there is on the, I don't know if you've seen Hickson's uh, self-defense unit. Mm -hmm. I've it's seen great. Mm -hmm. It's yep. great. Uh, even if you're just finding your sparring in class, the ground, the basics, escape this, apply this, finish this, it's great. There's also the self-defense portion of it. It's a bit basic, and even Pedro Valente told me it, it's basic, but he's just showing you a little bit of what you need. You obviously have to keep training it, and there's a lot more details in it, but he's just kind of showing you. Uh, and I agree that there's no black belt techniques. There is techniques done at a black belt level. Yes. And uh, in, in one of them, and it's it's so simple, but it's so, I was like, that's so important. He was talking about when you see some type of, what's the word? Aggression. It can be verbal. It can be just the presence. Someone staring you down, maybe having a few steps towards you. It doesn't have to be just all in, all out, you know, a zero to a hundred. There is a buildup a lot of times. And he says just, he, he was talking about uh, putting your uh, 
your weight more on the not heel. You have the heel. What's the how do you call the front? Like the ball of the foot. The, the ball. ball of the foot. Yeah. 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 Yep. And he says put your weight more on that because if you're a bit on the heel, he, if one push, he can mm -hmm. take you down. He says keep your hands up, uh, calm hands down, but at the same time keep down a bit rotated. So if anything comes, he was talking about this, and he yeah. he says always be ready for something that comes. So these things should be trained because they will keep you safe, and you can still get killed or sucker punched or whatever, mm -hmm. even if you're a great player. He even says this and. That brought me back to the Gordon Ryan Galvan situation. He, yeah. he never, he never, he, first of all, he stuck his head like this, never saw the slap coming. And after he he got slapped, he was a bit like, the, it, it, it reminded me of me in middle school, basically, against those <laughs> bigger bullies. And yeah. that's a world champion, class act grappler, one of the best grapplers on the planet. Mm -hmm. so is it. there something missing? Absolutely. Oh, for sure. And that, that's exactly what I was talking about as far as the the, the self-defense modality. I think that, that people ignore. It's like when it goes hands-on, honestly, um, the argument can be made that when it goes hands-on, that's kind of the easy part. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's let's not say easy. Let's say simple. That's the simple part. Because if you train, if you're a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, you know, if you have have that level of training in jujitsu, you're going to be fine in a physical altercation versus someone your same size in most situations. But when it gets hands on, but like you said, you can get sucker punched, you can get surprised, you can get taken advantage of, you can have a lack of situational awareness that leads to very dangerous things in your environment that you you just didn't take inventory of. You know, and you didn't take these simple precautions, right? And again, not easy, but simple precautions. Um, and that's that's why I think that what people discount a lot of the time, um, and what the 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 very sportive side uh, discounts about self defense training is they think, oh, you're just they 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 they, they picture self defense as uh, you're going to take a weekend course. And you're going to learn a handful of techniques and you're never going to train again. So it's going to be worthless. Right. And for there's there's plenty of times that's absolutely true. Like there's there's plenty of self-defense courses that, um, you know, and I, I try to make this clear on any seminar period that I do. But especially yeah. if it's concerning self-defense is that if you don't it, all this is for is to try to get enough reps in where you can go back and train this with as few mistakes as possible so that you can actually get proficient. You're not going to get proficient in anything in a seminar or a weekend course. You know, that's that's virtually impossible. It's not going to be accessible to you. You're not going to learn these things and then walk out to your car tonight and get jumped and ex be, a, be expected to implement any of these things. So what has to happen is you have to take that information and you have to take it back and you have to just train and train and train and, and pull it apart and put it under the microscope and figure out um, personal issues that you have with it, personal problems and everything else. And, and then try to train it to the most effectiveness that it can be trained of.